In this video, we're going to build a custom short answer question that seems to understand the answer you type in. I'm Paul Wilson, and I make videos about e-learning, specifically the authoring tool Adobe Captivate. If you like what I do here today, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and by all means, share it with all of your e-learning buddies. I got a message from one of the viewers of my YouTube channel who was talking about a request for an e-learning project that requires the user to enter an answer to a question. And then there's a button to be clicked and it would show ChatGPT or another AI out there and the answer that is, of course, the correct answer from the AI source there. How could this be done in Captivate? Well, I'm not sure that it could. However, that said, I'm going to come up with a solution that might make it seem like your short answer question is a little bit smarter than it is just out of the gate. So let's get started. Okay, let's start by looking at the short answer question that's built into Adobe Captivate. So you're given an input field like you see right here. And uh, one of the things that you can do is put in all the possible answers. So I could type in analyze, design, develop, implement, evaluate. But here's the problem. I started thinking about this. And you've got all these different variations. And I'm just using capital letters in this case because that's what I plan to use in my custom solution. But it literally could be double this because of the number of possibilities. So I'm not good at math in that regard. But someone could calculate how many different versions of analyze, design, develop, implement, evaluate could there be if we use all the variations off of these root words it would be ridiculous like and you wouldn't want to create such a question anyway i'm just going to cancel out of this and i'm going to go to this slide here where i've started to build my own custom solution so let me break down what i have on the slide here so very first thing i've got is a paragraph block and what i've done is i've just put the body text here and uh, the default state is really the same as the correct feedback except that I've lowered the opacity down to zero. And then there's a correct state where I've got the correct message and the answer that we're looking for and an incorrect version of that same message here. So I'm just going to leave this as the default state for right now. Next, I have a input field block where I've got my label, my input field, and I've selected one of the variations in the design options to give you lots of space to write your answer if you wish. And of course, we've added a couple buttons to this as well, and I've distributed them uniformly across the slide. The next button will simply take you to the next slide, and I've set that up to be not visible in output. So you have to at least try to get the answer in order to get the next button to proceed. And the submit button is where all the action will take place. So let's go into our interactions icon in the right hand toolbar here. Now we're going to need to set up a whole series of conditions because we need to look at basically these same words and figure out, OK, well, what what common combination of characters makes up the root that's in all of these words? So I'm going to keep this little notepad document uh, handy over here in my other monitor here and we'll start to build the conditional interaction that i have in mind here so first i'm going to click on plus and you might be thinking well okay it's usually for a lot of these it starts off with if some variable equals well not in this case because if we choose variable we're actually limited to only a certain number of conditions. In this case, we're going to work with the content of the element. Now, I'm going to set up the input field to only accept uppercase letters. So we're going to put our answers in, all in uppercase in this case here. So I'm going to select the content of the element. And in this case, our element is our input field. 
and we're going to say not equal to, but rather is containing a value, and we're going to use just a portion of this. So you see with analyze, you've got the Z, but you also have SIS if it's analysis. So we're going to only copy up to the Y here. So I'm going to use that and put that as the value that I'm looking for. Press save, and we're going to add another condition as well. So in addition to a word that starts with A-N-A-L-Y, we're also going to check to see if our input field contains a value equal to, and then here we're safe to select the entire word design. So I'm going to paste that in there, press save. We'll add another condition. The content of our input field contains, that's important, a value of develop. Okay, save, add another condition content of our input field contains a value of implement, save, and one more we're going to add, content of our element contains a value, and again, we have to go a little bit less than the root word here because it could end in E, it could end in I-O-N. So I'm going to just copy that and we'll pop that in there and press save. So this should cover all the possibilities. It doesn't matter what order they type these in as long as the words contain these characters that I'm looking for here in any order that you wish as long as they're grouped into these individual roots, if you will. Well, what are we going to do if this is all true? Well, we're going to set the state of our feedback caption to correct, press next, reset the state if you allow learners to revisit the slide, press done, and I'm also going to add the action of showing our next button. Press next, again reset state on slide revisit, press done, and that takes care of if it's correct. If it's not correct, it's going to be the else. So in other words, the condition is not being met. So in that case, we're going to set the state of our feedback caption to incorrect, reset state on slide revisit, and we're also going to show the next button as well here because uh, they'll learn what the correct answer is from the feedback message. Select Reset State on Slide Revisit and Done. And if someone's going to type, try to type in the correct answer again, there's one last thing we can do to just make this seem a little bit more natural. When they click on the input field, we can have an interaction. So in other words, when we make this input field active, we can reset our feedback caption back to its default state there. And we'll click Next, Reset State on Slide Revisit, and Done. So now let's take another look at our input field here. Uh, instead of just accepting text, we are going to specifically say, I only want uppercase letters, and that will ensure that the answers that I've put into that interaction, the conditions in that interaction, will match what someone types, as long as their spelling is okay. So let's do a preview and see how this works. Okay, here we go. What does Addy stand for in instructional design? Well, in this case, I'm going to just type a bunch of words here. I'm going to just type it like I'm writing a paragraph here. Uh, Addy stands for analysis, design, development. I'll use one of the variations there. Implementation and evaluation. And I can tell you honestly that uh, what is ideal about this is all these extra words would normally mess up the built-in question slide. 
If I press submit, I get the correct answer. Even though I added all those extra filler words, it just found analysis, design, development, implement. It even ignored the ION at the end and uh, part of evaluate as well. So now my learners can click next and go on with the rest of the project. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.